Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton and I was able to squeak the back nine out before work. Sitting at a minus 31 on both of my accounts. Unfortunately, on my other account, I took a birdie on hole number 18 as I tried to go a different drive and headwind and it did not work out. That cost me a minus 32, but all in all, I'm very happy to get a double 31. So, you know what? Let's just hop into it. Please, please, if you're not a subscriber, become one and hit the thumbs up button before you leave the video. That does mean a lot to me whenever you guys do that. Thank you. All right. Hole number one. Listen, um, here's what I'm doing. Okay. It's a major tournament. I'm using a berserker. You know, you got to keep the berserkers for tournaments, especially majors. I'm trying to get the best score that I can heading into the final round. So if I fall on my face, at least I have a good tiebreaker. You do not have to use a Berserker here. You can definitely use a Titan. The Berserker is definitely going to be a much easier way to accomplish the drive on this hole. Because you can see that even with the Zerk, we are pushing up into max to figure out where we need our drive to be. And we do barely clear the rough here with our target. If you're using a Titan, you're going to have to probably go full OP. Here, this is about half a ball OP. Makes it a heck of a lot easier to hit a perfect shot. We bounce, we bounce, and we're good. Uh, this shot is just fine. You can add a little bit of left curl to it if you want. But, you know, on my accounts, I was nowhere close to going into that sand trap. I either bounce over it or go to the left-hand side around it like we have been all tournament. Here, 0% at mid. We're going to go with the full top spin approach. This time we're going to do with one bar of side spin to the left, which you're going to see me add here in just a moment. I almost forgot to add the side spin, and then I remembered right before I took my shot that I better get it in there. Aiming dead center. Here, again, 0% at mid. Make a very, very small adjustment. Perfect ball. Time to go into the hole. I fast forward through that as I think most people know how to play these little wedge shots. It's just that one bar of side spin to the left is the key. Hole number two, we're going to play at five. I'm sorry, we're going to play at minus 5% at mid. We are playing this uphill. So again, minus 5% at mid, three bars of side spin to the right with the katana, one bar of back spin. Okay, one back, three right, minus 5% at mid. Last piece of the puzzle here is to hit a perfect ball. Make sure that you rewind and you check out the landing position so that you're able to copy and mimic this. That ball hits the pin for a dead center hole in one. Hole number three. Okay, now take a look at where my opponent is at. Um, I wanted to do that. I wanted to take a berserker. He took a power five ball. He just lit it up the second fairway. He did have a chip and albatross shot, which he made. To try to appeal to the masses here, uh, I am going to go ahead and go with the rough bump. But if you're somebody who's got the club, he either used, it was either an APOC 5 or an extra mile 9, I forget. If you've got the club power and you don't mind using another power ball, um, which is what tournaments are for, you know, right there is your chance to get super duper up the fairway and take a very short chip-in shot for an albatross. But for me, I'm going to go try to appeal to the players who don't have the clubs like that. And I'm just going to show you what we're doing here. We are going to go with a Titan, okay? It is going to be important that you do not go full top spin. You're going to see me back this up to four and a half. Four and a half top, one left. No overpower. The reason that we're doing that is because we don't want to get too many yards on the drive when we're going on this side of the fairway. So I do hit a perfect ball. If we go too far, we're not going to be able to do the rough bump with our sniper. Okay, We'd have to do it with the backbone or whatever club that you're playing with there. Uh, if that's okay with you, then I would pick the Goliath. So if you want to go bombs away on the right-hand side, I would bring the Goliath in for the rough bump. But here, you're going to see I'm playing minus 10%. It'll be up to you to check whether you're at minimum, medium, or max, or somewhere in between. That's going to be very, very drive-dependent. So all I can do here is just give you what elevation to play, which is minus 10%. Now, I do hit a perfect ball. Absolutely. Unfortunately, I'm coming at the pin 
but I just didn't put enough top spin on there to get myself enough speed to get into the hole. That shot is right on line, right in target. We just need to make sure that we leave the ball guy line through the hole. All right, now we're going to go to hole number four. Remember, this is the hole in which I play the rough bump with the runner. But as far as the drive goes, we're going to go two and a half top, three bars of side spin to the left. Now here, we're gonna take a normal shot. We don't have to use any overpower at all. We do get that perfect ball. And we come in very nicely. So don't use more topspin, don't use more overpower. Here, that's gonna leave us with a shot, which I'm gonna play 0% at mid. Again, this is gonna be with the runner club. Best club to use here are the runner or the hornet. That's just gonna depend on what availability that you have in your bag. But you're gonna see here, this time I am putting enough top spin on to make sure I got the ball guideline going through the hole. You'll notice here that my green inner ring is right up on the rough line. We hit a perfect ball. And we get this thing to go into the hole for another eagle there on hole number four. Hole number five is a hole in one that's been treating me really nice. Hopefully it does in the finals as well. Pick up a hole in one on both accounts here. You're going to notice the setup is going to be just a little bit of top spin. Let's call that point three bars of top spin. Yellow ring right here up on the rough line. Let's take a look at the ball guideline going to the hole. One thing I wish the game would get rid of is these stupid player icons on the green. You know, we don't want those things in our way when we're trying to set up shots. Like that right there is super annoying when you're trying to take a look at everything that's going on. So there you go. I zoom in for you. And now we make our wind adjustment. Notice here the wind is 2.2 miles an hour, but I'm pulling this around 1.9 rings. So this is a very small adjustment on this hole especially when you get a very favorable wind at only 2.2 miles an hour. But we get this one into the hole, pretty much center into the cup. All right, so here's a more challenging wind, 4.1. So we go from the lower end of the scale to almost the top end of the scale on wind. But the nice part is I'm able to line this thing up, you know, the exact same way. I have no opponent icon in my way. This is a much faster setup because I made it the first time at this point. You know, I'm setting up identically. I'm just hoping that the wind push doesn't throw the shot off any. But you can see here, we hit the rough bump. Uh, we get the angle, and it's dead center as well. So, again, that hole has been very, very kind to me in this tournament. I hope it's treating you the same. Hole number six. This one stinks, okay? This one stinks. Um, if you don't want to use a berserker, that is okay. You're going to have to at least use a kingmaker. I would say without a Zerk or without a Kingmaker, you're going to be in a lot of trouble on this hole. So for me, I'm going to play it, you know, like I have been so far in the tournament, you know, going from fairway to fairway. You could try to play up here on the right-hand side of the fairway underneath these sand traps. It still leaves you for a difficult shot. I've seen one opponent eagle it. I've seen one opponent pick up a birdie. But for me... Um, you know, very new to the course. I'm just trying to play everything for the most part the same way. But a berserker is going to make your life a heck of a lot easier on this hole. You can still accomplish the eagle with other balls. It's just going to be much, much harder. All right. So now we're going to go here. You're going to see how nice this berserker is. You know, we have so much room on the fairway to play. This is going to be an automatic eagle for us with a, with a very good chance for an albatross. To whereas a lot of other opponents are going to be fighting for their eagle. You see here I'm going max backspin. Ball guideline pointing at the cup. 10% at max is the pull. Now you get that perfect ball. Very, very close for the big dog Alba. We need to move our target over a little bit to the right. The ball guideline is always hard to judge on the big dog, but look at that. We're very close, and I hope you all sneak it in there. Hole number seven is a set shot, but I'm doing a different landing position this time. 
full top, full right with the Kingmaker. That's my normal landing position, that bush, okay, right there. But that four mile per hour headwind scared me. So I'm gonna go over here to where there's less rough and more fairway. And then of course, just use curl to get it figured out. Basically, if we take a look at my landing spot, look at that one cacti tree right there, okay? That one cacti kind of hanging out by itself, I'm aiming right over the middle of that. See it right there? One ball of curl to the right, full OP. Basically just letting this thing rip as hard as I can. And we make it down there. All I'm trying to do is make it down here onto the fairway. Leave me for shot number two. Shot number two, 10% at mid. I hit a great ball, but it would not have been in with a perfect anyways. Here's what we need to do. We need to take some backspin off. The headwind and the backspin is too much. I do like the ball guy line bouncing into the hole just like that. That's how I've been playing it all tournament. But I do believe we need to take a half a bar of backspin off just simply because the backspin and the headwind combined is just making this ball stop. Just like that. It kind of just dies, right? So it, it, with a perfect ball, I still don't think that ball's in. It would have been a little bit closer. You know, you lose power whenever you hit great. You lose distance. It would have been close. Who knows? But um, I think you can get it if you take some backspin off. Hole number eight. I got a hole in one here for you. 10% at mid. Back your, back your screen up a little bit like this so that whenever you go to adjust your backspin, you can see the fully developed ball guideline. One bar of backspin, not quite, let's call it like 0 0.8, 0 0.9 bars of backspin. And here you see me wiggle around, but what I'm looking for here is just to shade my ball guideline right there. I missed this one to the left a couple times in practice. So as you can see here, I got the ball guideline going through the hole and then it's favoring just so slightly the right hand side of the cup. Here we make our wind adjustment. 10% at mid, which remember is three, is gonna be one for one minus 0 0.1. So if your wind is 3.4, you pull it 3.3. If your wind's 4.0, you pull it 3.9. Dead center, hole in one, awesome stuff. All right, last hole. This hole, I birdied on one of my accounts. It cost me a minus 32. Please, please subscribe if you're not a subscriber already please hit that thumbs up button before you leave. I'm gonna go this way, all right? I'm gonna do the bounce over. There's really no secret here. I'm gonna pull it 10% at max. I know we're not at max, but I'm pulling it that way just because of the headwind. Hey, if you'd like to show me some appreciation for my work so far in the major tournament, I do have a link to my PayPal in the comments section below. And trust me when I say anything helps, replenish practice tokens, balls, time, effort, all that kind of stuff. So if you'd like to show me a little token, that would be awesome. And then shot number two here. Don't do what I did. I, you know, I messed up hole nine on both my accounts, but you saw on the scorecard, I do pick up the eagle on this account, but I chip in from the rough. This is a glitchy ball guideline, all right? So you're going to notice here as I'm moving around, it's on the green. It's way, look at that one, way past the green. Here, way short of the green right? So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to leave it short of the green because that's an easy chip in, right? But look at this. Something really wild about this fairway here is just, it just takes off. Even though it was severely short, look how long it goes. But that was no problem. That's a very short chip in. I even hit a slight great right and the ball went into the hole. So I will take it and I will see you all tomorrow for pro and then I'll see you in the final rounds. Great luck, everyone.